Hiranyakashipu was an abominable demon who lived millions of years ago. He became very powerful due to his austerities and the benedictions received from Lord Brahma. He occupied the throne of Indra and all but the three principal demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. Personally worshipped him to please him. Indeed, he even made great sages like Narada offer praise to him again and again just to glorify him. One day he took his son Prahlad on his lap and very affectionately inquired. My dear son, please let me know what you think is the best of all the subjects you have studied from your teachers. O oh, best of the Asuras, king of the demons, as far as I have learned from my spiritual master, any person who has accepted a temporary body and temporary household life is certainly embarrassed by anxiety because of having fallen in a dark well where there is no water but only suffering. One should give up this position and go to the forest. More clearly, one should go to Vrindavan where only Krishna consciousness is prevalent and should thus take shelter of the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> Thus is the intelligence of children spoiled by the words of the enemy. Let my assistants be ordered to give complete protection to Prahlad at the Gurukula where he is instructed, so that his intelligence will not be further influenced by Vaishnavas who may go there in disguise. After this incident, the teachers chastised and threatened Prahlad in various ways. They began teaching him about the paths of religion, economic development and sense gratification. After some time, the teachers thought that Prahlad was sufficiently educated in the diplomatic affairs of specifying public leaders, appeasing them by giving them lucrative posts, dividing and ruling over them and punishing them in cases of disobedience. One day, they presented Prahlad before his father. Hiranyakashipu affectionately seated Prahlad Maharaj on his lap and began smiling his head. With affectionate tears gliding down from his eyes and moistening the child's smiling face, he spoke to his son as follows. Dear Prahlad, my dear son, O oh long-lived one, for so much time, you have heard many things from your teachers. Now please, repeat to me whatever you think is the best of that knowledge. Ravanam Kirtanam Vishnav Smaranam Padasevanam Arjanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam Hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paravanilia, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord one best friend, and surrendering everything unto him. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. After hearing these words of devotional service from the mouth of his son Prahlad, Hiranyakashipu was extremely angry. He found out that whatever Prahlad had said was not taught by the teachers. Consequently, he asked Prahlad, You rascal, most fallen of our family, if you have not received this education from your teachers, where have you gotten it? How have you become attached to Krishna? My dear father, Unless they smear upon their bodies the dust of the lotus feet of a Vaishnava, 
completely freed from material contamination. Person very much inclined towards materialistic life cannot be attached to the lotus feet of the Lord, who is glorified for his uncommon activities. Only by becoming Krishna conscious and taking shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord, in this way can one be freed from the material contamination. After Prahlad Maharaj had spoken in this way and became silent and become silent, Hiranyakashipu, blinded by anger, threw him off his lap and onto the ground. Indignant and angry, his reddish eyes like molten copper, Hiranyakashipu said to his servants, Oh demons, take this boy away from me. He is the most fallen of our family. He deserves to be killed. Kill him as soon as possible. Hiranyakashipu could not kill his son by throwing him beneath the feet of big elephants, throwing him among huge, fearful snakes, employing destructive spells, hurling him from the top of the hill, conjuring up illusory tricks, administering poison, starving him, exposing him to severe cold, winds, fire and water, or throwing in heavy stones to crush him. When Hiranyakashipu found that he could not in any way harm Prahlad, who was completely sinless, he was in great anxiety about what to do next and thought to himself as follows. I have used many ill names in chastising this boy Prahlad and have devised many means of killing him. But despite all my endeavors, he could not be killed. Although he is merely a child, he is situated in complete fearlessness. He resembles a dog's curved tail, which can never be straightened because he never forgets his connection with his master, Lord Vishnu. I can see that this boy's strength is unlimited, for he has not feared any of my punishments. He appears immortal. Therefore, because of my enmity toward him, I shall die. Or maybe this will not take place. When Iranakashapu thus became morose, the teachers Sanda and Amarka suggested that when Prahlad is somewhat growing up and has assimilated their instructions or served their spiritual master Sukracharya, he will change in his intelligence. Hiranyakashipu agreed and thereafter Sanda Namarka systematically and unceasingly taught Prahlad Maharaj about mundane religion, economic development and sense gratification. Prahlad, however, did not like their materialistic instructions. When teachers went home to attend to their household affairs, Prahlad Maharaj preached to his class friends in a very sweet language. He instructed them as follows. My dear friends, one who is sufficiently intelligent should use the human form of body from the very beginning of life. In other words, from the tender age of childhood to practice the activities of devotional service giving up all other engagements. The human body is most rarely achieved, and although temporary like other bodies, it is meaningful because in human life, one can perform devotional service. Even a slight amount of sincere devotional service can give one complete perfection. In this way, Prahlad preached to his friends about the goal of life and dissipated all their doubts. Following the instructions of Prahlad Maharaj, all the sons of demons became attached to Lord Vishnu. Their teachers, Sanda and Amarka, were very much afraid that the boys would become more and more devoted to, to the Lord. In a helpless condition, they approached Iranyakashipu and described in detail 
the effects of Prahlad's preaching. After hearing of this, Hiranyakashipu became uncontrollably enraged and decided to kill his son Prahlad and spoke thus. Oh, most impudent, most unintelligent disruptor of the family, oh, lowest of mankind, you have violated my power to rule you, and therefore you are an obstinate fool. Not only are you spoiled, but now you're spoiling all the other boys at the school. Today, I shall send you to the place of Yamaraj. My son Prahlad, you rascal. You know that when I am angry, all the planets of three worlds tremble, along with their chief rulers. By whose power has a rascal like you become so impudent that you appear fearless and overstep my power to rule you? My dear king, the source of my strength, of which you are asking, is also the source of yours. Indeed, the original source of all kinds of strength is one. He is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is not only your strength or mine, but the only strength for everyone. Without him, no one can get any strength, whether moving or not moving, superior or inferior. Everyone, including Lord Brahma, is controlled by the strength of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In former times, there were many fools like you who did not conquer the six enemies that steal away the wealth of this body. These fools were very proud, thinking, I have conquered all the enemies in all the ten directions. But if a person is victorious over the six enemies and is equipoised towards all living entities, for him, there are no enemies. Enemies are merely imagined by one in ignorance. Rascal, you are trying to minimize my value as if you were better than me at controlling the senses? This is over-intelligent. I can therefore understand that you desire to die at my hands. For this kind of nonsensical talk is indulged in by those who are about to die. Oh, most unfortunate Prahlad, you have always described a supreme being other than me, a supreme being who is above everything, who is the controller of everyone. You have described him as all pervading, but where is he? If he's everywhere, then why is he not present before me in this pillar? Because you're speaking so much nonsense, I shall now sever your head from your body. Now let me see your most worshipable God come to protect you. I want to see it. Passing Prahlad again and again, Hiranyakashipu took up his sword, got up from his royal throne, and with great anger, stuck his fist against the column. As soon as Hiranyakashipu stuck the column, there issued forth a tumultuous sound. At first, Hiranyakashipu, the king of the demons, could not see anything but the pillar. But to substantiate Prahlad's statement, the Lord came out of the pillar in his wonderful incarnation as Narasimha, half lion and half man. The Lord performed his pastimes by fighting with demon for some time and in the evening on the border between day and night the Lord captured the demon threw him on his lap and killed him by piercing his abdomen with his nails the Lord not only killed Hiranyakashipu the king of the demons but also killed many of demons many of his followers when there was no one else to fight, the Lord, roaring with anger, sat down on Hiranyakashipu's throne. Then all the demons, demigods, headed by the Lord Brahma, approached the Lord 
and began offering their prayers unto him, whose spiritual effulgence was brilliant as he sat on the throne. Jaya Prahlad Maharaj, Jaya Prahlad Maharaj 